Hi guys, so today I have a few items to share with you from Spellbinder's new January 2022 collections. I did send these items for your charge from my review, and of course all opinions are my own. And any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you were purchased items through those links. So, today I have um, a few different things. So this right here is the Radiant Navette. It's an A2 size die set from the Classically Becca collection. This is also from Classically Becca. This is the Cinch and Go Blossoms. So you can see there's some flowers here. I'll talk about that in a minute. And I think I'm going to accent them with a few other items from the Be Bold collection, which would be the uppercase H and the lowercase I, just to say hi. And I borrowed some leaves and some greenery from uh, the Be Bold Blooms collection, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. We'll need those later. But for right now, let's look at this guy. So the um, Classically Becca, the new collections, they came out with some slimline borders, but they also did A2 size um, dies, which is really nice because a lot of times it's like a 5 by 7 type thing with um, Becca's uh, dies. So let me measure this outer one. So this big guy cuts the whole outer uh, like frame or mat, should I say. From the little tip to this one is 5 inches. And then over here, I'm trying to find like the farthest edge, uh, is just over four inches. Okay, so that's this outer one. And then this guy, oh, actually it's two <laughs> different inlays. You can use that, you know, as a background, then you can do the inlay on the topper piece or just do the inlay and have it that way, however you would like to use them, of course. So those guys are there. Beautiful kind of... Um, very, I wouldn't say lace, but just a just gorgeous pattern. And then this guy is separate from those, and then this middle little one. This one also will cut the matte layer, or you can use the insert, or of course a combination of both. But look at that. Very Art Nouveau, that's what I'm thinking, like marquee type things, I don't know. So we have that, and then we have this little piece that you can also use to cut that out, or use it as a little matte layer, or however you want to use it, but that's there. And I'm going to pair it with the uh, Cinch and Go Blossoms. Um, they do have centers. If you're going to do Cinch and Go, usually you use your own, like, a little, um, like those little stamen centers, the ones that have, like, pearls on the ed ends of them, or however you want to put them together. You can also do it with just um, any, basically anything, a little bead on a wire, you know, you just put it through. You need something that stays up here on top, so you just pull them and make them a shape. But we do have this large flower, and it has four layers, and this one is, like just over two inches in all direction. So that's the largest flower, so that's gonna make a big boy. And then we have all these different layers. Of course, you can make them smaller flowers, layer up this way, layer this guy with three, layer this guy with two, you know, however you wanna do them, or singly, singularly, singly, I don't know, by themselves. <laughs> so we have those. And then this one's more, kind of give me like a rose petal vibe, like a little posy. Um, so this one's smaller and it has the three layers. Again, you can layer them however you like. And this one is, just over an inch all around. And then we have these three centers that, again, you can pair them up once you put them together. If you're using stamens, of course, you're not going to pop this on top, but you can pop it in the back. Like I say, you cut it just to have some little decoration. I think it'd be cute. Um, so we have these three centers that are uh, large to small. I think in some of the examples, um, they have them kind of layered in between some layers, like in there, and then this guy's poking out from here, so you can still see that behind it. Lots of fun ways to play with that. So what I'm going to do is grab some papers, I'm going to put together a card with little flowers, um, and then, like I said, accent it with these Be Bold uh, collection items over here, okay? So I will be right back. Okay, guys, so I have a standard H2 size card base, just one of my Spellbinders card kits here, ready to go. Eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. And um, as you're making your own, I think what I'm going to do is, oh, I'm going to cut this down. Uh, it's a pearlescent kind of lavender paper to... Sorry, I just realized I hadn't grabbed my die yet. Um, this is the Precision Layering Die from Set A. It's the largest one, so it's going to cut my uh, five and a half by four and a quarter matte layer to go right on top of the card. And then once I have that cut out, I'm going to run it through um, this uh, floral embossing folder. I think that'll look really pretty. Just have a little texture behind what else we're going to do. So that'll be that guy. And then with this white paper, I'm going to do a lot of white on white, and then we're going to bring back some color with the flowers and things. So let me put these to the side for a moment. Uh, I'm going to cut out a white matte layer like this. And then, um, oops, sorry. So just like that. And then I'm going to do another one with the inlay. And whenever you put your inlays in, you always want to put some tape so your dies don't move, of course. 
So I'm going to do those, tape them down so they don't move when I'm through my die cutting machine. And I'm also going to do the exact same thing with this guy. So I'm going to cut out one just white like that. And then another one with the inlay taped down. Of course, it does not move. And I will be right back. Just quickly as I'm working, I do want to mention that when you're using a Spellbinders um, embossing folder, you want the word Spellbinders facing you, and then you want your paper facing you also face up, because the um, impression pushes up into your paper, okay? Unless you want the reverse side, then you would fl uh, face it down. But just want to note that, because I know different companies sometimes do it different ways, so that's how the Spellbinders ones work. And I'll run this through. Nice, this is just gorgeous. Oh, look at that. Okay, where is my card? Here it is. And this for sure I'm just going to go ahead and glue down. Again, that perfect layer with the precision layering dies. Love it. Um, I'm going to glue this guy down. Hopefully my glue is ready. Sorry about that. I'm just going to glue this down just straight on. Um, and then in the meantime I'll also glue together these layers. So we have white on white. Again, I'm just going to glue these two together. And then this one with that one, and that's what that's going to look like, okay? Uh, I'll be right back. Hey guys, so we have our card pieces, something like that, just so pretty. I'll put this to the side. And um, with these little guys, I'll probably use three. I like, you know, groups of three. And so I'm going to bring back that purple and just cut out the three at a time and just so they don't move whenever I put something like that through a die cutting machine I'll just tape them in different spots there and if you want to run them through again with the embossing I'll probably do that because it gives it that little if you can see here that little ridge will end up being embossed and I'll let that be some of the texture that I want so I'll do that uh, three different times and then I have some little white stamens here that I can just pop in there um, I may also yeah I'll run through these greeneries I'm not sure if I'm using it or all of it um, on this green pearlescent paper and bring that pearl color back in and I'll okay. be back. Okay guys so I have uh, three sets of three here and they stayed in here really nicely so it was very easy to emboss afterwards uh, just depends on your die cutting system. I will mention that the new Aqua Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine is back in stock so I have these guys and we have these pretties over here again I may or may not use them I just want to have them ready gorgeous okay so for these little guys um, since I gave them the texture from the embossing I know my lighting it just washes out these little guys um, all I'm gonna do is take some of these um, centers so let me find the center so I can grab some and I just went with white I'm gonna do gold lettering I think for the high but um, if you want to bring some of that back into there that'd be really sweet too I don't know if I need that many or just three pulled together I think we'll just do three in each so I grabbed three usually I fold them over but these are small flowers so I'm just going to do that so it has three and um, you're gonna start with the smallest one and this is if you want to make them cinch and go otherwise you can just glue them together maybe do a little texturing and you can put some glue behind each layer hot glue or just regular glue so I'm just gonna grab this right quick just to put a little glue back here and then of course you want to offset your petals so when I bring it in I want that one more that way so you can see that Put a little offset oh my gosh so sorry I tried to make the lighting less bright and it did not work out <clears throat> excuse me and a little more glue on this one just a little something till it sets up if you use hot glue, obviously it's going to set really fast. And just get the last petal on there. And again, offsetting those guys. This is very thick pearlescent paper, so it's going to do a little bit something different possibly. And we're just going to pull them. So that's what the cinch and go. And I'm just tightening it up. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And if you want to do a little more shaping, you know, you could have done it at the beginning. But like I said, this pearlescent paper is real thick and I did the embossing, so I wasn't looking to do that. But you can definitely just, oopsie, if you have a 
tool like this you can come in and just round it out or you can um, just use the other side of like a if you have like a thin pencil and you can bring it around so it rounds it out like that just whatever is that you might have that might give you a little extra texture so I'll do the same thing with the other two flowers okay and I'll be right back okay, so we have um, card base items oops we have our leaves our flowers I want to turn the other way. I'm going to run um, these letters through with some gold paper and I'll be right back. Okay, so I changed the lighting a little bit. I don't know if it's going to help, but we're going to just glue this guy down straight to this. I'm putting plenty of glue because of the texturing on the embossing. And make sure our card is opening the right way. Pop that guy on there. A little something on there okay that looks pretty good and I already popped some dimensionals on this guy just to not pause to do that but I probably should take the carriers off all right oh, just gorgeous so again a lot of white on white just really pretty and then I will take a moment to see how I want to lay out my little flowers. I might trim this down. It just depends. I'll probably turn my my uh, glue gun also. These guys will be in here somewhere. Then we have our little high. Let me see what that looks like. <laughs> I'm keeping it informal with our fancy card here. And then I'll glue these guys in here. Okay. So I'm just going to glue these down. And I'm just kind of eyeballing, centering them in that little area. That's kind of that little rectangular area there. I'll glue this down too. I'm going to turn on my um, glue gun. Here. So I have my little leaves. I just kind of was auditioning. But what I'm going to do, I think my hot glue is ready. I'm going to trim back quite a bit of this. I was going to mention on these last few flowers, what I did was I just uh, glued them together as they were just on my surf my surface, so that the little centers were, you know, offset, and so the centers lined up, and all I did was then pop in the three little stems, so there's a couple ways to do it, and then, of course, pull them tight so you have that cinch look, but um, that was really sweet, just worked out, let's think, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to put a little hot glue on the flower just so I know I get those little cinchers. I'll glue that down. And then maybe some here. Sorry, I had to take a little pause. Okay. Right in there. And then this guy can be kind of up. Put a lot of glue on that one. Cute. And then these guys I'll probably just glue down. Just kind of want to see where that might work. Oh, that one's touching the hot glue already. So guess what? That's going to stay down there. And then I'll put a little glue behind there. And then this little one. Push it in a little further if I can. Oh, it's so sweet. I don't know that I need these other leaves. Hmm. If I did that, maybe it would be there. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of glue behind, you know, these little guys and pu push it down. Actually, you know, I like a lot of movement. I got, it doesn't bother me that it's up, but if you're going to send it, you want it to stay. So I'm just going to glue those down and glue these down, and I'll be right back, guys. There's, look at all that's going on. And honestly, it just took minutes, I mean, to roll the things through and then just our little flowers. Like, wow. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you so much, Spellbinders, for sending designs for review. I'll have some images for you. I'll have the links in the description box, and I will see you guys at the next one. Bye now.